Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury and welcome back for part nine of our rope clinic. Today, what we're gonna talk about really is how to gain mechanical advantage using ropes and using a rope tackle. And we're not going to put block and tackle involvement in this lesson. It's all going to do with ropes and maybe adding a possible carabiner here or there to save wear and tear on the rope. But we're gonna talk about different ways to make loops and different ways to gain mechanical advantage using a rope depending on what the purpose is. If you're trying to stretch a rope across a long expanse, you need more mechanical advantage to be able to stretch that rope very tight. Whereas if you're just tying down a load, sometimes you don't need as much mechanical advantage or putting up something like a ridge line. So let's talk through that today real quick. Stay with me guys. So what you can see in this example is we have set up what's called a Versa tackle on two loops and we have half hitched it off in the end to keep it in place. This is a self-tightening type hitch, and we've employed two carabiners on our loops to save wear and tear on the rope. You could do this without the carabiners on the loops themselves, but you risk more wear and tear on your ropes that way. So let's kind of reverse engineer this or take this apart real quick and talk about it. We've got the opposite end of this rope is anchored to a tree, not that far away but we are using this smaller rope and a smaller example of what you can do on a larger scale if you were stretching a rope across a long expanse. So basically you have two turns of line through the carabiners going in a circle, just like this. And we started on this end and put a directional figure of eight knot and on this end, we used an alpine butterfly. Now there's lots of different ways we could do that. Now, a lot of your decision on what loops and things you use on this rope is, how much tensile strength do you wanna give up versus the knot you tied in it? And the difficulty level to get that untied once it's been under stress. This is a directional figure of eight here, and it's been under fairly good stress with a Versa tackle, giving us at least four to one mechanical advantage. And it's going to be fairly difficult to get this undone without the use of some kind of a marlin spike to put in there, but I can still get it undone. So it's not horribly bad. Now, if we go to this other side, which was the front of our tackle system. We had an Alpine butterfly tied in this one. The Alpine butterfly is very easy to get undone most of the time because it breaks down fairly easily. It doesn't have a lot of degradation to the rope. So it's a pretty good choice as well. There are choices that you can use here that basically will come undone by themselves very readily, but they may not be as secure connection. So again, we've got one end of this rope connected solid and anchored with just a running bowline. We have a tree on this side that we are wrapping the rope through or around that we want to tighten up. Now we have to decide what we're going to use as a tackle system or a rope tackle to tighten this up. And if this is just a ridge line, we can use a single loop and just put our rope through that loop. And probably one of the easiest ways to do that is just to turn over and pull a loop of line through the rope, just like this, which gives us basically a slippery loop in the line or a running knot, depending on how you look at it. And when we come around from this opposite direction with this rope and come through that loop, that's going to give us basically a two to one mechanical advantage if this rope was moving around the tree. But because it's on a solid object, you really just have one to one mechanical advantage you're pulling against to tighten this rope. So once we put this rope through the loop, we've now created a two to one mechanical advantage to pull against this to tighten it up. And then we can just pinch it off and we can either pinch both lines together or pinch only one, come over the top and tie a security half hitch in here just like this over the top, pulling toward the knot. And that's going to give us good security for something like a ridge line that's perfect for that. However, this rope being fairly tight is because it's a short distance. We only have about 20 foot to the other end. If we had longer rope that we're trying to stretch out to get tight or a heavier rope, then we would want more mechanical advantage. But before we talk about that, let's talk about a couple different loops we can use in this line. So like I said, in this case, 
what we used was basically a very simple slip loop type configuration where we just pulled a loop of line over the top, just like that, turned it over on itself, gave ourselves a little slack to pull a collapsing loop in here, basically a noose type loop that we can use to pull against. And most people call that a trucker's hitch. It's not a true trucker's hitch. A true trucker's hitch would involve a directional figure of eight, and that's not what we tied. If we're gonna make a traditional trucker's hitch employing a directional figure of eight, we're going to grab a loop of line, understanding that this loop's going to go back the other direction, so that's going to be directional in nature. So once we have that loop and cross it over, we're going to come around behind and back through, just like this, so that our loop in that figure eight is coming out the same direction as what's going around the tree. And then when we put this through, that figure of eight loop is being pulled in the direction that we're trying to tighten. And that is a directional figure of eight. Now that's what you would use for a traditional textbook style trucker hitch. However, pretty much any loop that you can put in this line, people consider that a trucker's hitch, a hay wagon hitch, a load hitch, whatever you choose to call it where you're from. So really any loop that we put in this line that we use for a tackling system to draw attention on it, people call those trucker's hitches. Now something else we can do with this is we can take this line up and we can tie in here what's called a Dutchman's knot. And a Dutchman's knot is pretty much a half of a sheep shank. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn this line over and bring this loop through that line and collapse it down on top of it like this. And so when we come back around this side with the rope and put it through this loop, we've now created a tensioning system here that's going to pull tension down and collapse on this, but it's going to hold very well to be able to tension that line. We can put as much tension on it as we want to, and this is not going to slip out of here. The beauty of this style knot, this Dutchman's knot or half sheep shank is that when we release pressure off of it, it will basically fall apart. So there's no knots in the line whatsoever for us to have to worry about untying after the fact. So let's look at that again real quick. We're going to take a loop in the line, just like this, we've got a bite here. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up and this side underneath is going to become our tackling loop. And we're just going to turn this over, drop the loop through like this and pull it down on top of that loop. And this then becomes our tensioning loop that we're putting force on, which is trapping this bite in the line. And now we can come around and pull this through our tensioning loop here, just like we would with any other trucker style hitch and pull that down. And it's not going to come undone because it's collapsed on top of this loop and the force really isn't coming here. The force is being pulled against here and holding everything tight. Now you could put a toggle in here if you're worried about it and kind of pre-collapse that down on a toggle if you wanted to, to make sure that loop could never slip through there. And then you'd have to pull that toggle out to get it undone. But again, the beauty of that is everything comes undone without untying any knots. So the one thing you wanna be careful of when you're making this Dutchman's hitch is that when you turn this loop in the line, you make sure that you come in with this bite behind that so that you're collapsing down on top of it with that loop. That way, when you're pulling against everything, it's locked in. If you don't do that, it's gonna collapse on itself and come out on you. But if you make sure you've got that locked over the top like that, pull this through here real quick. When you pull down on this, everything's going to be locked in place. You've got to wrap around that loop that's got it locked in place and it's not going to slip out on you under pressure. It's just going to get tighter and tighter over top of this. If you tie that in there backwards and you come over the top and through like this, so that the line's going away from the loop. Instead of down, when you pull on that, it's going to collapse on itself and come undone. If we're going to 
have a long expansive rope and we're going to really be putting a lot of force on this like with a versa tackle we're getting like four to one advantage i'm going to want to use something that's a very very strong loop so that's why i chose in this case to use the alpine butterfly as my inline loop and a directional figure of eight on the other end but this could be a directional figure of eight as well I just find that the Alpine Butterfly is a little easier to get undone. It doesn't matter what direction you tie it, it's going to work either way. The second loop that you tie is going to need to be something that's very similar in strength to this. If you don't tie another Alpine Butterfly, you could tie a directional figure of eight. Okay, so in this case, all I did was tie another Alpine Butterfly. So I have one here and one here. To make this Versa Tackle, with no carabiners and just a friction type tensioning device. I'm just going to take my rope and I'm going to go through this loop and bring it back to the other loop and go through. So I'm going up and then down. So I'm going to do the same thing another time. I'm gonna go up through and down through. And that's going to give me two loops of line that are going through these loops and give me a minimum of four to one mechanical advantage. And now I can pull this down pretty much with one hand to tighten it up and it will self lock because these ropes are locking on each other around inside this loop. That's the advantage of this. If you're using no carabiners and things like that, it's a very strong locking device when you pull it down. However, you're putting a lot of stress on the rope because you have a lot of heat and friction that you're running through these loops with two wraps inside here. Once you get that where you want it, it's easy enough to take this and tie it off with some kind of a security half hitch against there so that it doesn't come undone. If you're using this for load bearing purposes, I wouldn't use just raw loops. I'd go to some kind of a carabiner system, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if this is just to tie down a heavy load or something, or something that has to compress a long ways, is also a good reason to use something like this. You're trying to compress a load and tie it off. You can tie it off with a couple of security half hitches like this, and it'll be no problem at all for you, okay? Now, backing that up and coming out of that, which is, this is pretty much where we started. Now we're going to take this out and it's very easy to get this undone that's the other advantage of this rope tackle system is that it's very simple to get it undone so what we're going to do now is to make things safer if we were doing something that was load bearing or we were going to make a bridge a rope bridge or something like that then we can take care of some of this problem by putting a couple carabiners in these loops and that's where we started off to begin with. We had one carabiner here, and we had one carabiner here. And the setup is exactly the same. We're coming up through the bottom, down through the top. Dress that up. Up through the bottom. And down. And now we're back to our two loops again. And it will hold friction fairly well on itself. If we pull it down, it'll lock fairly well, but not as good. You can see it wants to slide a little bit because you've got those carabiners in there. But it will semi-lock, and it doesn't take a whole lot to hold it in place long enough to tie off a hitch in there to lock it off. And again, just a half inch through there and a half inch over the top again is probably going to be enough to secure that, okay? Now again, we're not talking about block and tackle because we don't have a block on here with a pulley in it. We're talking about nothing but ropes and carabiners, which really is the common things that people carry. I carry a few pulleys with me when I'm hunting and things like that, or when I'm in my four wheeler or my Jeep, but I don't normally carry stuff like that around in a pack. I carry a smaller diameter rope like this that we've discussed in past videos and two or three carabiners. And that's the extent of what I carry. So that's what I'm trying to work with to show you these techniques. Now, one thing you could do to eliminate a lot of this stress on the rope from knots and things like that is, instead of tying loops in the line, we could use prussics. Now, if we tie a couple prussic loops on the line, one on the side around the tree and one going toward the anchor, and then we decide to employ carabiners into that, now we've given ourselves several advantages. Number one, we're not suffering a lot of 
degradation to the rope in tensile strength because we didn't tie any knots in the rope itself. The other thing that we give ourselves is the ability to move this loop to a more desirable location after the fact because we have that prusik. So now we can go the same thing with our VersaTackle. We can pull that through, kind of decide this distance that we want. We can move this prusik down the line farther, move this one closer to our opposite tree and give ourselves a longer distance here now to close. And we can adjust that after the fact because we've used those prusik loops. That's a big advantage with stuff like this. Having adjustments after the fact keeps you from tying knots over and over and untying knots over and over. We have the same four to one mechanical advantage, except we don't have any knots in our rope whatsoever. The tie off and everything else security is exactly the same, but because we have allowed ourselves movement on these loops, we can now adjust things as we go to make sure they're right. Instead of having to untie the loop and tie it again because it wasn't far enough out on the rope or this one was too close to the tree and it was a pain in the butt to tie the knot, by putting a prusik on there, we avoid all of that. Now, the other advantage to having these prusik loops on the line is if we are using this system as more of a rescue system, say we're trying to pull a four-wheeler out of the mud, and so we're, the gap we can close is this big. Once we close that gap up, we've moved that four-wheeler back toward us. Now we've collapsed our line. We can chalk the wheels, we can undo the VersaTackle loops, and we can just slide this prusik down the line a little further and start over again. We don't have to untie all the loops and mess around. All we have to do is loosen up the VersaTackle to the point where we're in the starting position, basically, like this. And if the thing was closed up to, let's say here, because we've pulled our foiler up that far and we've got everything closed up, all we have to do is loosen everything up, pull this out and stretch all this stuff out, feed the rope through slow, just like this, get closer and closer. And now we're back to starting over again and pulling it again and closing that gap again and then sliding down again, closing the gap, slide down again, closing the gap. And we can move both of these prusiks in both directions so that we can close that distance and make that rope shorter and shorter with that object closer and closer to it. All right, guys, well, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here today for just a quick lesson in mechanical advantage using ropes and carabiners only. Again, we didn't cover everything in this video, but I wanted to cover a couple quick things that you can use that I think will come in useful to you so that you're not inundated with too much information at one time. Do me a favor before you leave today, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and tell one of your buddies about my channel. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.